Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about yet another dynamic trough that's going to be digging in, bringing more severe weather and flooding rains into next week. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here's your latest uh, watches and warnings map as of this morning. April the 29th, and yeah, we're still dealing with those heavier rains with those flash flood watches in the Northeast Texas, uh, getting into Arkansas, extending all the way up into uh, Illinois, as uh, well as uh, Indiana, with some very high winds out here into uh, the Northeast. So here's the latest uh, storm reports. We had a lot of activity happening last night, some standouts. These are preliminary reports. So the, the National Weather Service is still investigating doing storm damage. This will be over several days now. But yeah, we had some very large hail in and around the Norman, Oklahoma area, in and around the Dallas area last night, into San Antonio. There were sporadic uh, tornado reports up to five now, all the way through uh, uh, Oklahoma and Arkansas, as well as uh, one in uh, Illinois and uh, Tennessee. And they'll probably be adding to those totals. And we had some high wind reports up here in uh, Pennsylvania. But let me zoom in to this massive hail that came out of San Antonio last night. Now, this is being checked out by the National Weather Service. But in the city of Hondo, by San Antonio here, they had a devastating supercell that came through a, a large populated city. And this hailstone potentially may have fallen in the city of Hondo. And if this checks out, the all-time state record is six inches on a hailstorm in the state of Texas. So this looks vicious. And if this checks out, this could be a new state record for uh, Dallas. So I'll let you know, or uh, into Texas, I'll let you know if that uh, checks out to be verified. But yeah, we had a, that, another huge swath of a, of a very massive supercell that came just right across the dallas Worth area, hit heavily populated cities all the way into Keller and to uh, back into Saginaw with some two to four inch damaging hail that came across right across the Metroplex. Uh, even in Norman, Oklahoma, they also had some massive hail that came through. So if you're talking about the populated cities with the zip codes that it's hit, with the largest, the large hail size that it uh, fell, guesstimates from the hail trace report are guesstimating anywhere from two to three billion dollars worth of damage with these two, these three uh, outbreaks of hail over those heavily populated cities. So that did some major destruction uh, to a lot of homes and some cars. So there'll be a, a lot of time doing a lot of cleanup uh, with the insurance companies out there. But yeah, another risk from this, not only was the severe risk, but the very heavy rain with the slow moving trough that we've been talking about moving across and it dumped some very heavy rain. This is the totals over the last uh, three days goes into this morning. There's your bullseye just south of Dallas, almost eight inches in the city of uh, Wachahachie. But yeah, down here in San Antonio where they had that supercell, multi-inch rains, a several multi-inch rain reports in, into Oklahoma, all the way extending into Arkansas. You can see where the reds are, where that fire hose effect has been taking place over the last uh, three days with those flooding rains all the way up into the northeast. But yeah, here's the latest uh, satellite picture as of this morning. And you can definitely see... Here's the upper level low. It is literally still in New Mexico. It really hasn't gone anywhere. And so add ahead of it, that's just a funnel feed of moisture effect happening into East Texas, still going into Arkansas, get, going into Missouri, uh, going into Tennessee, into, into Indiana, uh, as well as Ohio with some more rain. This will just basically kind of sit and spin and take its sweet time throughout the weekend and bring more heavy rain into a lot of the same regions. So let's go over this. So as that trough gets a little bit further off into uh, East, East Texas today, they do have that severe risk of some marginal storms that could take place just in East, East uh, Texas. This good swath will come up all the way through uh, Louisiana and the Mississippi and portions of Alabama going through Tennessee going through this, that fire hose effect that go all the way into the Ohio Valley, getting into uh, uh, Pennsylvania, as well as upstate New York uh, with some marginal severe thunderstorms. Uh, they do have a hail risk. It's about a 5% chance on some quarter size hail or potentially greater 
in and along uh, essentially East Texas, going into Louisiana and uh, Mississippi here, and a tornado threat too, just east of Dallas, a 2% chance, but there's, st there's still a chance of possibly an isolated spin up uh, with this developing uh, that low pressure center is going to be a little bit further off into uh, East Texas uh, with that uh, that main upper level low that's coming that's that's coming across. And as we go into Thursday there, yeah, there's that setup that's going to be later on this afternoon. That's where that severe risk uh, lies along this boundary, along this corridor with that relentless flow of precipitation. And as we go into Friday, that upper level low that's still sitting way back here in New Mexico it's going to take its sweet time and start shifting a little bit further south, getting the close, closer into Texas, but still with the lift out ahead of it, bringing heavier rains into south Texas, getting back into Houston, getting back into Louisiana as we try to get some colder air, try to sneak up to the nor into the northeast, but it's quite not going to make it. It's going to be more or less extended into uh, Canada, and we're still trying to find rain out here on the west coast just extreme, you know, poor parts of uh, Washington, but it's gonna be a, it's pretty dry over the next week in parts of the West. Uh, there's your severe threat as we go into uh, Saturday, uh, as that low sinks a little bit further south, there's that marginal risk of severe uh, thunderstorms happening in San Antonio, into Austin, into Shreveport, getting into portions of East Texas into Tyler. You're gonna be under the gun for those just marginal risk of severe weather that's, that's uh, coming up on the day of Saturday because that developing low, that upper level trough really doesn't go anywhere. It's over the state of Texas and just kind of meanders its way back over the Dallas-Worth area, back over Houston with some very heavy rain, just amplifying the flood threat down here in Texas. And as this system will, will finally start to move off into the Northeast as we get into Sunday. So there's just a lot more rain coming for you guys in Texas into Oklahoma, into Louisiana, into Arkansas, uh, as this developing low will finally, finally start to make its way uh, out of there as we go deeper in the day on Sunday, as that low pressure will be down here down to the south. And under that low, yeah, we could be picking up a little bit more severe weather into uh, Louisiana going into Mississippi as that extends into the Ohio Valley. There's your severe threat with that upper level low gonna be over at the Southeast by then as we go into Sunday. So places like Memphis, Tennessee, get into Jackson, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, as well as a uh, Meridian or that, you're gonna, those areas are gonna be under the gun for that larger hail threat, that damaging wind threat, and some basically isolated tornado threat again in this region as we go into Sunday right underneath that upper level low. And that low will just keep extending further into the northeast as we go into Sunday with some leftover precipitation as it try, finally tries to make its way out of there. But that's just in time for a developing trough that's diving in off into the Pacific Northwest. That's got some very cold air, a, a, a cold core out ahead of it. And yeah, we're talking snow in portions of Wyoming, bringing the snow back into the mountains of Colorado. And you can see this another low, so you don't have much rest in Dallas as another trough will start digging in into uh, the Texas panhandle. But out ahead of it, on the back side of this low pressure system, you always have sinking air on the back side, and the sinking air is your hottest air. So I do feel as we go into Sunday, there's your warm surge down to the south. There's your demarcation line of that developing trough with some very cold anomalies uh, underneath it, 20, 25 degrees below average, digging back into Colorado, getting into the Texas panhandle, making that clash back into Texas. We're gonna be very warm uh, out ahead of it. In fact, look at the temperatures on Sunday with that sinking air and the backside of the developing low pressure that's gonna be moving off the Northeast. And then with compressional heating coming off in the Northwest, there's your surge out ahead of it. There's 91 degrees in Dallas. That's probably the first time this season you're gonna be seeing 90 degrees. And of course you average about 100 uh, for the entire season. So that's just starting for you guys out there. But as we go into Monday night with that clash of the trough, we could be setting the stage uh, for more severe weather because we got a lot of cold air underneath it. This is by uh, Tuesday morning. Look at the low temperatures as into Wyoming and to Colorado with some freezing temperatures with snow flying in the mountain regions. 
And those cooler temperatures will, will start extending in portions of the Texas Panhandle, making the clash out ahead of it with soupy atmosphere into the mid-70s. Uh, so there's your setup on a global feature as when you look at the pattern as we go into Monday. Yeah, as the, the ridge will start to try to build back in over the West Coast, we'll try to build back in over the East Coast. Out in the middle, we got that developing trough. And up top, we got the blocking, which would be a Rex blocking pattern and amplifying the feature down below. That will set the stage for possibly a more severe weather in the Dallas Fort Worth area as we go into Monday night into the overnight on Monday into Tuesday. Yeah, so we could be looking at yet another chance of strong to severe thunderstorms again into the Dallas Worth area, going to Arlington as Plano and to, you know Garland extending into you know portions of Oklahoma again with that trough coming in and out ahead of it with that warm surge. You're just going to re-aggravate, you know, amplify the temperatures again, give you plenty of fuel of the fire to reload the atmosphere. And as that developing trough will dig back in, uh, it, you could set the stage for, yeah, more severe weather into the Dallas Worth area, get into Oklahoma. There's your Tuesday morning look as that low will, will make its way, extending with more flooding rains in Oklahoma, get into Arkansas, get into Missouri. Uh, with that same first system trying to make its way off the coast into the northeast with still extended rain so we're talking yes we're talking a lot of rain and as that that trough will start to amplify as we go into wednesday we'll set in more rain into the ohio valley uh into the northeast so if we look at the big picture of all the extended rain i showed you the totals just in the last three days of all the heavier rains but with that upper level trough just making its sweet time over Texas will be amplifying today, tomorrow, and to Saturday, finally make its way into Sunday. And then top of the feature, that secondary feature on Tuesday, man, we're talking more flooding rains over Texas. The drought is going to be <laughs> just well taken care of, it almost be a, a not a non-existent threat as flooding rains will set over into San Antonio and to Austin and to the Dallas Worth area into Oklahoma and right up that fire hose effect into the Southeast, all these reds and, and yellows here. Some of the whites could be picking up another six to eight inches. This is on top of what you've already seen over just over the last uh, several days. So we got a lot of heavier rain um, extending with that upper level low and that trough that's coming in by the time on Wednesday, on Monday. But yeah, look at the dry spots. There's not much happening off the West Coast. Uh, there's very little precipitation out ahead of it. This is going to actually be forming in the in the form of snow. Pretty dry out into uh, Florida, along the coast here into Florida, but all the action is going to be in Texas and Oklahoma, get into Missouri, Arkansas, much of the heavier rain in the southeast, going to the Ohio Valley, and the northeast is still going to be picking up some very heavy rain over the next five to six days with this system. And here's your snow. So the only snow in town over the next week is underneath that developing trough and it's going to be a, a cold coral off and this is mainly a higher elevation event but yeah it's going to dump some very heavy snow so it's going to keep the ski resorts happy for an extended period of time as we go into may as the as, as the ski season will just be amped up because they've had plenty of snow this year into uh, colorado so yeah, that, that gives you an idea of how this is all going to play out over the next uh, five to six days. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after storm.